Shalom, my brothers and sisters. This brother Amaz coming back to you with a call to action, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, I'm excited again that I get to do this. I'm excited for the opportunity I get to do this because I get to speak truth to power. See, that's what we need. We need brothers and sisters to speak up and speak truth to power because the information has always been there. It's always been well documented, well presented. And so don't let nobody get, get, you know, get you all confounded and confused with their feelings and emotions because their opinion does not matter. See, the Baba Dick Gregory, the legendary Dick Gregory spoke and said, the truth does not need to be validated by anybody's ignorance. And since you don't know something or you feel as though something, it does not matter. It does not mean that it's not truth. OK, and just like y'all will continuously hear me say and talk about white supremacy, white privilege and racism, because those are the factors of this world. OK, white supremacy, white privilege and racism are the factors of this world that constantly, constantly destroys this earth. Point blank, period. See, I'm not talking about the quote unquote average type white folks, okay? When I talk about white supremacy, white privilege and racism, I'm talking about those type of white folks that can call the stock market and determine whether it's going to go up and down. Remember the woman, the, the, the senators over on, like I believe, North Carolina or South Carolina in Atlanta, where they actually knew that the coronavirus was coming, that they pulled their stocks out? Those are the type of white folks that I'm dealing with and I'm talking about, okay? I'm not talking about your average folk because y'all get too emotional about things that are actually true because white supremacy will kill their own people to advance the to advance their policies and positions so now let's understand well let's let's focus on racism see racism is the ability to control a person or a specific people's fate and destiny i say that again racism is the ability to control a a specific people and person fate in destiny and you control that through education determining okay you're going to get these type of resources in this neighborhood you're going to get these type of resources in that neighborhood you're going to have these specific type of teachers you're going to have that specific type of teachers you're going to have these this type of lunch you're going to have that type of lunch you're going to have access to these to these reasons or all that it's education careers we're going to have housing we're going to have food and we got to understand racism is not just a, a, a Caucasian calling a person a specific name, calling them, calling them the, the, uh, the N word and things like that. That's not racism. That is more so being prejudiced. OK, we see racism through qualified immunity with these police officers being able to shoot black individuals down in cold daylight on camera. And they're still getting the benefit of the doubt. OK. And they're still getting not charged, even though all things fat, all things are there. OK, that's racism right there. That's the systematic aspects of racism. OK, it's not just calling a person a name. See, and black folks cannot be racist. Stop and shut up with that. OK, stop being confounded. Stop being confused. The definition of racism is the ability to control a specific people or persons fate and destiny through education through uh careers through uh housing through food what specific people on this planet earth the caucasian what specific people on this planet earth the caucasian controls the earth's resources who is in every country who is in africa with africa who is over there in the quote unquote Middle East, which is not no, there's no such thing as the Middle East, because then where's Middle North? Where's Middle South? Where's Middle West? Okay, who's over there in all this other? Who's who, who's over there constantly being a bully? The Caucasian, United States of America. So we got to understand these things. We got to stop playing games when the truth is there. Stop being scared of you. Stop being scared about your job. Stop being scared to lose friends. You don't love truth. If you're constantly backing down from truth, speak truth to power, but know what you're talking about. See, I'm not, I'm not encouraging. What I'm encouraging this is testicular fortitude. What I'm encouraging is you to study, you to study, you to study because the information is there. Look up, like I, like I spoke on last week, I said the Freedom of Information Act. The Freedom of Information Act gives us average American citizens 
the ability to stretch forth and to find out different aspects that are going on within our education system, what's going on within our governmental system, what's going on with different job force, the job force network, the different housing situations. You can get that type of information if you don't have the strings to to uh, to gain that information. OK, if you don't have the relationships built to gain that information. OK, the Freedom of Information Act, you can submit those things, type in Google. Freedom of Information Act, and then you will go to the government website. You can start requesting. I, I requested many school districts um, um, information, and that's how I started to build upon the information that I have gained and obtained because that information has become public. And Or you can go into the uh, Library of Congress's website, and you can start searching different aspects of, you know, of this governmental system. You can go also... You can go deal with the executive orders of these presidents, Google executive orders of these presidents going from uh, 45, Obama, you know, J J George Bush and, you know, Clinton, all of them. Because there's specific executive orders that are still in place that keep us trapped, that keep us minimized. OK, see. One thing I got to understand about the, about this governmental system. America is a powerful entity. OK, America is a powerful entity and their time is running out. OK, they understand that the United Nations, you know, NATO and all of them, they understand what America does and what America doesn't do. America does their own thing. So. You got to understand as as United States citizens, quote unquote, not even not us so-called blacks, because we're not a part of that. OK, stop believing and thinking that you're a part of something that you're not. OK, we keep talking about voting and voting and voting. Damn, it's been 45 presidents. Well, before during the United States Constitution, because the Articles of Confederation, there was there was at least, you know, about there was a few presidents before that, before George Bush. I mean, George, George Washington. So you telling me it takes 45 times for you guys to keep on saying, oh, we need to vote. We need to vote. We need to vote. Y'all, we've been voting. It's just different arms on the same body. It's still white supremacy. It's still racism. OK, and a lot of times, you know, y'all push that agenda and y'all y'all get happy on or oh, they got a black. They don't. No one has a black agenda. None of these presidents have a black agenda because they don't want one. OK, you can't tell me. See, see, think about this. Think about this statement. You can't tell me throughout all the Congress with all those individuals with the with a different type of master degree they have, the different type of PhDs and specific specialized degree they have that they can't understand that there needs to be a black agenda. that They can't understand what really is the cause of, of the cause of all of this foolishness. You got see, 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 stop thinking on a simple, simple level, ladies and gentlemen. They have all the degrees and all that. They have all the resources of, of not just America, of the world at their disposal. So you're telling me they can't find out what's going on, but common folks that sit in many different uh, local meetings can find out, but they can't. They can. It's just a matter of they're not going to. Like I said, black folks, we're not getting reparations. I know that. I know that. I know you know that that really bothers a lot of y'all. We're not getting reparations. You Okay, I will explain this very simply. They put out three trillion dollars out for twelve hundred dollars, right? For all the Americans in this world, that's over what? That's millions of Americans in this country, right? Uh, So-called blacks, we make up less than twenty percent of the population. Okay, if they wanted to get reparations, they can do it, you know, but they're not. Many people have talked about, oh yeah, I got this proposal for you, not getting reparations because. If you understand something, look up special, special order 15, special order 15, because after the Civil War, right, when we once again, we joined with the Caucasians to fight their war at, on the Union side to beat the Confederates. And guess what happened? The Confederate soldiers, because I mean, after that, a so-called blast, we were, we were we were promised 40 acres and a mule, right? We were given that. However, the Confederate soldiers who are also Caucasians, see the Union and the Confederacy, that's white on white crime, right? They were the Confederate soldiers started to complain like, yo, 
we ain't got no land. Like, how y'all giving it to still slaves? How y'all giving it to them? They're not even able to be in a the constitute. They're not even real humans, according to how they were thinking. So guess what happened? The, the land that was given, the 40 acres and a mule, it was forfeited by law to the Confederate soldiers. So the blacks lost their 40 acres and a mule. So guess what, blacks? We're not getting reparations. It's not happening. Stop being so simple. You're believing in the in the in the lesser of two evils. It's like you keep putting your hand on the stove and wonder why you get burnt. Okay, stop playing the games, ladies and gentlemen. Stop playing the games. I want y'all to really look up. Start start researching the Freedom of Information Act. Start researching at the Library of Congress. Okay. Start going to your local House of Representative individuals and start demanding the resources that they have to start learning about how laws are given. Because you can't tell me that it takes all these things for you to put laws in order or put laws to the table to deal with police reform, to deal with uh, racism, system, systemic racism at the job, in the neighborhood, in education, and with the food. They don't want it, okay? Stop playing games. And remember this, so-called Black, Hispanic, Native Americans. You are God's chosen people. Can't no one take that away. You just need to wake the hell up, okay? Don't, don't, get, don't get confused. You understand what your nationality is. We are one people with 12 different tribes. One people, God's chosen people. You cannot let no one take that from you. And you know why is it so important that your God's chosen people? Why does that continuously to be stressed? It's because it's simple as this. You have specific laws. You have specific commandments that you must follow. Okay? This government system does not work for us. Stop being simple. Stop being simple. Stop being simple. Okay? Look up Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verse 68. Let me read that real quick because y'all think this is a game. Now y'all think this is a game. Let, let me let me just get a couple scriptures in. Matter of fact, we're gonna read Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15, real quick, ladies and gentlemen. No, uh, yeah, we're gonna read verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So what's that saying is, if we God has given the children of Israel, so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, a specific order, specific commandments, and that if we don't do those things, certain curses are going to come to us. Now let's get some of this. Let's go verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Now, what population of people was sold to other people? Us blacks, we were sold to who? The whites, the other people. And thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thy hand. Like, there's no economic power or no military power for us to retrieve our, our brothers and sisters that has gone into slavery. Who does that specific, who was sold to another people? Okay. Let's go, let's, let's go to a banger real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Now let's understand this. And the Lord shall, this Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Now understand this. is precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. The word Egypt is, is synonymous in Exodus 20, verse 2, for bondage or slavery or captivity. So let's read that again with that understanding. Verse, verse Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt or bondage again with ships. With ships. That means what nation of people has ever gone into slavery or bondage with ships? Wow. History tells that there was a transatlantic slave trade. There was a sub-Saharan slave trade. Wow. Those are the black folks. So let's continue on. By the way whereof I shall speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. We understand that we have came from the continent of Africa. We have not seen that land again since we have since we were taken from that land. Let's continue. And there shall be sold unto your enemies. 
not friends, enemies, enemies. So therefore, a specific people were going to be sold unto their enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. Man, who were sold unto another people? Like I read in verse 32, who was sold unto another people? Not, not, the, not the Holocaust. That's foolishness. That's six main people. That's still white on white crime. White people were sold to white people. What nation or population of people was ever sold to another people? That was who? Blacks were sold to whites, right? For bondmen, slave men, bond women, slave women. And guess what? And no man shall buy you. Meaning that there was there will be people that will potentially raise up that they cannot get us free. Martin Luther King, Malcolm Max, uh, Mega Evers, Stokely Carmichael, those sorts of people will not we will be sold into slavery by ships for bond men and bond women to our enemies. Now let me get another one. See, this is Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. Therefore, see, this is, therefore, shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. So the most high is in commandment of this, because we cho constantly chose to break his, break our ordained laws, not the laws of this land, not the laws of the white and Caucasians and the Asians and the, and the Arabs, our specific commandments. Let me read that again. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. That means all our operations of food have to go through them. We don't own the we don't own the big corporations of food in hunger and in thirst. We don't own the, the big drinking companies and in nakedness, our clothing lines. Look at Gucci. Look at Louis Vuitton. They look at those white big companies. We don't own big brands of clothing. And in want of all things, meaning that we will be sold, that we that we will have to we will, we will have to be going to other nations to get our necessities, our food, our drinks, our clothing, our, our shelter, everything will be having to go to them. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. That means guess what? There will be specific chains around our neck. What specific of what specific people in history have had chains around their neck called yokes of iron? Blacks. And ladies and gentlemen, that's how we understand through Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68, that we are God's chosen people. See, we can't play this game. It was a curse placed upon us because we were a rebellious and a disobedient people against our God. As I read, we were we were we were a special people above all other people, but we constantly chose to lower ourselves to their standards. And guess what? We were defeated at their level instead of being on our own level. Stop playing games. You are the chosen people. Why don't you want to accept the fact that you're a chosen nation nation of people by so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native American brothers and sisters? Why is that hard to forget about the what, Caucasian, the Asians and the Arabs? Why? We don't have to be, be, be hateful to them. We just live peace among them, but we got to understand we're not them. They're not us. They can never be us. Our bloodline is why. We are a specific chosen people. Stop being afraid of it. Take your place. You call yourself kings and queens. Okay, this is, this is, this is where you get shown that you are truly from the royal bloodline. You are really God's chosen people. You are really the true prince and princesses of the of the of the of your of the most high god, the one and true god. Ladies and gentlemen, let's stop playing games. With that, let my brothers and sisters, this brother Amas, I didn't come to play games. We speak truth to power because the truth doesn't need to be validated by anybody's ignorance. That's Baba Dick Gregory, the legendary Baba Dick Gregory. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I say shalom.